Right now, there's a fascinating piece of history that's unfolding before our very eyes. I want to take you to a prophecy that was given by Kim Clement regarding the death of the North Korean ruler, Kim Jong-un. This was in 2009. He had begun this prophetic uh, proclamation about this. And then he moves on to uh, 2016. I want to share with you what I believe was going on in that time that would cause a proclamation of the death of a ruler. And I want to talk about the new era that we're in, which is the era when all economies and all nations are being shaken and how God is going to be dealing differently with ruling structures as the church rises up. So let's take a look at uh, how this actually is going to work. I've got my eye on this prophecy right here. This is an easier version. I tried to broadcast earlier. This would be better. God said a sign shall be this. Two signs shall I give. One shall be the death of a leader who shall rapidly deteriorate in Korea. In Korea, he puts it right in there. That's Kim Clement's prophecy, 2015, 2016. And he says, I'm going to take both North Korea and South Korea and make it one. And uh, your days are numbered, Kim. And then, then he goes on to say, South Korea, North Korea shall, I, shall become one, says the Lord God. The North Korea president is dead. He is already dead. He's already dead. He's already dead. The sentence of death was on him. I have already written on the wall, many, many take out parties. And God said, and this is from when Daniel was interpreting the handwriting on the wall in Babylon, when Cyrus came into power that night, Cyrus came in and uh, Kim prophesied regarding Donald Trump as well. And so he says, your president's already dead. I've written on the wall. God said, your days are numbered. You have been counted in the balance. Now, in 2009, already something had been said. Let's go there. Therefore, Kim, it is now time for you to face this that you have done. Uh, What you've done has been iniquitous. You're no longer alive. You are a vegetable. I want to tell you what that judgment is and why that particular judgment. You are brain dead. God said, because of that, I will cause that to bring about unity in the South and North Korea. And the greatest move of the spirit shall come from there. Ah, the greatest move of the spirit shall come from there. So let's take a look at exactly what is happening. Now, many of you might not remember this, but Kim and I were talking about this as it was taking place. And it was it was quite a um, it was quite an issue uh, that uh, that it was taking place. And he was very disturbed about it. This was in. uh, December 29th, under the Obama administration, we had a young man, 22-year-old, named Otto Warmbier. Otto Warmbier, 22 years old, he goes into um, with a tour guide group in December of 2015. And he goes in and he sees a North Korean flag on the wall. And typical, uh, you know, uh, I, I'd have to say, rambunctious, um, you know, full, full of energy, full, uh, full of confidence type of uh, collegiate type of spirit. He goes over and he grabs the flag off the wall and he takes it to make it a souvenir to bring it home, the flag of North Korea, right? So in January 2nd, he's arrested. On June 12th of 2017, uh, he is returned to the United States comatose. He's essentially brain dead and he dies a short while later. And then then North Korea has the the hubris to charge $2 million to the United States for his medical care, when in fact, it is, it is, uh, anyone in the intelligence community will tell you what they did was a kind of a lobotomizing of this young man. His judgment was he was made brain dead. And he died shortly after that. He was sent home brain dead. And I honestly believe that this is what happened. I believe the Lord began the prophecy about the, about the times and that the, uh, the leader of North, remember these, these regimes have killed Christians. They have killed pastors. They have killed believers and imprisoned them. And God watches over this and it is not, he is not indifferent to this. But we're living in a different age than other ages when God is now beginning to render judgments on nations. Look, the United States, whether you like it or not, is weighing in the balance. Because if we do not change and reform our nation, if the church doesn't rise up and take a more vigilant and vigorous engagement in, in righting this ship, then God is saying there is an end to the United States that can come just as swiftly as the end of any great empire that was on the earth. Uh, 20 million jobs have been evaporated. But Donald Trump is in office, and I believe God and Kim prophesied this as well. 
that there was a that there was something God was going to do that was going to be a great move of the Spirit. I believe that we're going to begin to see the uh, the shifting in America, and it's coming about. But it's not going to be without the vigorous Reformation engagement of the church, not just a sideshow revival activity. While the nation continues to have the cockpit taken over by arsonists and kamikaze pilots, we've got to actually get in to the uh, to the elements of authority, which is why Kim's prophecy ended with the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. This is part of the prophecy. It's kingdoms that God is dealing with now. I believe what happened was that, that uh, this Otto was when he was rendered brain dead, that it was curious enough, it was in September, 2016, which a few months before this incident happened, that Kim prophesied brain dead. And I honestly believe that, Kim, that the leader of North Korea, uh, they don't make any decision without him, him, his decision making. I believe he gave the order, send the message back to the Americans. Don't send your people into my country to try to, to, try to raise up political upheaval. I'll send a message. I'm going to send the guy back brain dead. Well, the Lord said, that's it. You're brain dead. And from that moment in 2016, when he made that decision, Kim Jong-un, and when the prophet prophesied, the clock was already struck. And the mercy of God was there for 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Done. Because the mercy of God does have a, have a, a, a limit. As is the patience of God with, with the period of time for repentance. Does that make sense? So we're, here we are now. And people say, and Christians say, well, does God do that? I don't believe God does that. I don't believe God. Well, this is just, this is the kind of, 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 of illiteracy that we have to deal with among ourselves because we can't be on the same page with God if we're fighting what God wants to do. So you take a look at Acts. Let's go to, you know, you can go to the book of Acts and you can see very clearly where the church was being persecuted and, uh, and you see where uh, Paul, uh, Peter was locked up in prison and then Herod goes uh, in order to bring him out and kill him. But what takes place is kind of interesting. As he's about to do this thing, uh, the Lord sends an angel and the angel breaks Peter out of his imprisonment. And when Peter comes out of the prison, you'll see it's in uh, Acts chapter 12. You just look at it, Acts chapter 12. Uh, this, the ruler Herod intends to bring him out because he's going to kill him. And he's already killed James, one of the other apostles. And on a set day, Herod comes out and is giving an oration. Uh, and Peter's broken out of the, uh, he's got his angelic jailbreak. Herod has killed all the guards that were supposed to be guarding him. And then he begins to make this oration on his political platform. And a certain day in his royal apparel, and all the people came shouting, verse 22, chapter 12. And, and, and the people say, this is the voice of a God and not a man, which is what all these totalitarian leaders, by the way, are told. You're like God in, in flesh. And he says, and, he's, and he takes... This is a great compliment. And immediately, verse 23, an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. He was eaten by worms and died, but the word of the Lord prevailed. So you see, this is a New Testament judgment of a ruler who is standing in the way of God's um, apostolic purpose and agenda and who is not authorized. There are times when there's this persecution, you could say that there's a set time where things in the Bible are predicted that they will take place. But there are those that, that seek to change those times. The spirit of Antichrist wants to take America down now. The Bible says in Daniel, he seeks to change the times. Uh, that This goes to how he wants to administrate when he's in power, but it's the nature of the spirit of Antichrist to want to disrupt the timing of God. And so God's way of dealing with that is if the church is in unity and if the church is sufficiently prepared to pray through and to protect the agenda of heaven, God will judge secular rulers. We're in the day right now where this is going to happen more and more. And so Kim Clement prophesied regarding Kim Jong-un brain dead, and I believe it's because he would render someone brain dead. And, and, uh, and it could be that you know, maybe he had his jurisdiction in North Korea and God was you know, filling the balance and it would come about that there would be a judgment, as there has been with other rulers. We've seen this. <clears throat> but in this case, I believe when he touched that young American, he went outside of the jurisdiction of, uh, of the principalities of North Korea. And boom, he was judged immediately. The prophet picked it up. Kim picked up the, the, the mischief right, four months before it happened. <clears throat> now you remember the media fawning all over Kim Jong-un's sister. We had the Olympics, Winter Olympics, and every, oh my gosh, because, the de because they're only the influence of demons as far as I'm concerned. They're the false prophet is in the, in the false news media. 
and, and so they remember the pictures, oh, she's like, and they're just doing all these, they're just awash a with ecstasy over the beautiful, lovely, younger sister of Kim Jong-un. Well, she's in power now. China just sent down to the guise of a medical team, forget the medical team. They went down there with their, their top uh, Communist Party leadership to button up North Korea because the last thing they want is North Korea to become joined with South Korea, which is what the prophet said, because that puts a democracy on their border and they were using North Korea as a tool to keep Trump in abeyance in terms of how far he would go with the tariffs. If North Korea is assimilated by a move with South Korea <coughs> versus North Korea assimilating South Korea, which is worse because that would be China taking over North and South. You see the battle right now is going to be the people and, and, and the structure, trust me, the structure is going to crack down on auto, auto, autocratic control of South Korea. And it's going to send a message. But the spirit of the Lord is spoken by the prophet. The brain dead judgment that God has rendered. I believe we have to say that that spirit is now inoperable in North Korea. In Jesus' name. There shall be no unified agenda that shall be forged by Beijing that will control North Korea. And then South Korea will have a surge of strength and the church will rise up in the South for they have prayed for unity. I've seen the South Koreans pray with tears streaming down their faces as though they were a family that was divorced. It's a strange thing there. They're praying Cho's Mountain, Prayer Mountain, and the Christians are praying and crying because Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea, was the Azusa that picked up the anointing from Azusa Street in 1907 and 1908. It was the epicenter of revival in that region. So, so literally, the, the capital of North Korea was the center of the Azusa revival in that, in that era. It's called the Jewel. It was the Jewel of the East. And then the, and then the communists took it over. Now, they're going, well, we're going to see who prevails between South and North Korea. And your prayers have to be for the binding of the coordination, dividing the tongues and the agendas, fragmenting the authorities that would try to assimilate control now that God has removed the head. Now, Goli now Goliath is stunned. Now Goliath has been stunned in the head, so to speak. The, the smooth stone of, of the slingshot of God has hit that Goliath, that principality, that set that coronavirus, whether it was intentional or whether a principality leaked it through a refrigerator, the devil sent that thing over to the United States to take us out as a world power, to take us out as a military uh, uh, firewall, to take us out as an economic force. And God is saying to the United States, what will you be? You're not going to have business as usual. Either America has reformation and revival that affects an awakening that affects D.C. government, local government, that affects your mayors and your sheriffs so that they're not locking you up and shutting you down so that your economy isn't gutted and America's property is sold to some ghastly new beastly system with an amalgamation of currencies where the United States, 27 trillion here and there, and there comes fleeing home into wheelbarrows with people going down the street like the, like the Germans in the Great Depression, uh, you know, suffering before World War II. I'm telling you, God is giving a wake-up call for the awakening. It's a wake-up call for the awakening, but the church better wake up. It better wake up that it's in a geopolitical era. It's in the era of the battle of nations. It's in the era where you own more than just the revival and down the street. You own what happens in the corridors of power. You surrender that territory and Satan will, you do a sweeping revival. The great awakening everybody's focused on. Woo, the winds blow furiously and have a great harvest come in. But what did Jesus say? If the winds sweep clean the house, but if it's not occupied, it may, if, it's, if it's set in order, but not occupied, then the devil comes back with seven times worse, seven times worse. And what's that going to look like when the devils are, have more authority over the church and in the church, over communities and in the families, over education and in the schools, over government and in the courts and over the media, more than we got now. And you're deplatformed from platforms like this and can't even talk to one another over the arts industry with this propaganda swelling uh, music about the new world order. And then uh, and then you have business totally on its knees, prostrate into a globalistic alliance with Davos and Europe and China. And I'm telling you something, it doesn't have to happen. Now, some people will say, well, Lance, the Bible does talk about this. Yes, but you see that there's a timing for these things. And now is not the time. And why do I know that? Because there's a Cyrus in office. And I prophesied this. I predicted. I quoted Heidi Baker talking about bread lines 
And I said that there's a fourth turning coming. It's, the, it's page 14. The fourth crucible of the United States in history is going to hit us. And God wants Trump as the Cyrus that is in office, right? That, see the flag? It's like America. The devil wants to totally unravel this country. But God wants to bring it together. And so we're, we are witnessing the first phase of an unraveling. But now I'm saying we're witnessing the first phase of a great awakening. But it's an awakening to territory we have to take. And I'm going to finish this right now. Haggai prophesied, and I've been saying this all along, that if God's people under Cyrus would not get involved with God's building project, God would get their attention. And they all said, but it's not time for this, not time for that. We have an election coming. God said, forget the election. I'm the one who's going to be changing America, not Donald Trump. I put Donald Trump in as a, as a firewall, as a deterrence to the, to the agenda of hell. <clears throat> America doesn't get transformed by, by, by him. It gets transformed by an enlightened and an engaged reformed church that is reforming culture and so god pulled the plug on the jews and their building projects and he said nope while you're all doing your own thing and not doing my thing i think i'm going to end your thing and it was an economic judgment and then they all repented god said and something new began to happen they got on their feet and the recovery began the economic recovery began and god began building his house the bible says right in that chapter I'm going to shake the earth. I'm going to shake the heavens. I'm going to shake the throne of kingdoms and Gentile kingdoms. I'm shaking nations. Haggai chapter 2. Read it. We're in the shaking of nations. But the good news is, and I mean this sincerely, we're in the awakening of the body of Christ. We're awakening. But it's not to business as usual with our, our irrelevant, if you don't mind me saying so, spiritual activity. But it's taking the scepter of Esther, taking the authority of Zion, taking the, the kingdoms of this world are now beginning to shake because the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ is arising in government, in media, in business, and we have to unify around that agenda. And the, and the Haggai and Zechariah voices are saying, this plague is coming to an end. This Pentecost is an outpouring of God's spirit. But the purpose of all of this is that the church would awaken and arise as a, as a galvanizing governmental force in the nations. And if you'll do that, You'll have sheep nations. And when the inevitable turn of events does take place, there will be a fortified alliance of sheep nations against goat nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, nations against nations. But the anointing and the increase of God's end time outpouring is going to be so magnificent, so glorious, that uh, you will be thanking God that you're alive in that period of the outpouring. And it's just beginning now. Share this with your friends. Share it. And... Uh, and we're going to uh, go off this broadcast because i got to go do a Wagner Leadership Institute broadcast now. And uh, let me just go wave off with my brother Kim prophesying. You are a vegetable. You are, dead. you are brain dead. And God said, because of that, I will cause that to bring about unity in South and North Korea. And the greatest move of the Spirit shall come from there. America shall...